What's up lads, I'm Cirrus Symmetry, thank you for joining me. Let's talk mechanics. Sapphire Star, Eschaton Judgment or Ecliptic Meteor. I'm sure that these are all familiar phrases for those of you who started in 5th gen. Regardless of how you feel about their implementation or faith to historical Monster Hunter, you have to deal with it, and it's all fairly manageable for a competent player. However, as is typical for this channel, we're going to take a look back at previous unique mechanics for individual fights that, well, who knows, would be nice to see in future installments, and some that you may not know about. Now. Just before we get started, if you do enjoy this history lesson, feel free to give us a sub and check out my other channels as this will really let me know if you like watching this as much as I like making it. Down to business then, note that we will not be incorporating basic ideas such as charge states, second rage modes, items and so on. We're looking for the good stuff here, stuff that really stands out, and yes, there's going to be an awful lot of frontier. Here we go. We'll start with the third generation, the lovely Kurupeko, a bird wyvern modelled after a songbird and a trumpet. Yeah. Peko here had the unique ability of being able to mimic monster roars, and in doing so would immediately summon said monster to the area. When your unexpected guest showed up at your exclusive slugfest party, this funky little lad would do a song and dance to provide attack, defense, and even health buffs. Words could not describe the terror of hearing a Devil Joe roar come out of that cone-shaped beak. A monster that calls other monsters. Could you imagine dealing with that chaos? If we stick with the third generation for now, the final low rank village quest in Tri had you square off against a Cideus. Now this point will be a side note for now, since it's the first example of a strict DPS check in the series. That's right, you may despise Eschaton or Extremoth, but let it be known that if you didn't give Cideus a good shave and break its beard during its chase sequence, it would just simply choose not to vibe with the quest and leave. It gave a slow moving fight a real sense of urgency during that segment. Next up is a concept that spans two iterations, paired monsters. The introduction of Celtus and Celtus Queen as a pair that can team up was one hell of a great idea, but did you know that team monsters also existed in Frontier? Nono and Kamu Orgaram were a pair of walls that attacked in tandem, as well as the magnetic pair of Lolo and Rey Gogarth. Similarly, Aragonos and Gorgonos were relatives of the Vazioth that went as far as to revive the other from death while combining their attacks in unique animations. Now we may have Rathlos and Rathian, however I believe that the concept of a monster a pair in the main series has been criminally underused, and I'd love to see it return. If we continue on with the Frontier theme now, we arrive at a concept I call Counterpoints. In Frontier, certain attacks from certain monsters allowed you to negate damage and simply cruise through, just by attacking your enemy in the middle of the animation. If you pull this off, however, you are rewarded with a large flash, decent damage, and in some cases, a pretty good knockdown. Some examples include Gorgomor and Seregius. However, Zenith Kiki took this a step further and gave the player essentially a quick time event. A red circle would appear on your HUD, and once it closed in on the center of your screen, timing a block would reflect Huji's needle attack back at it, causing a fairly decent KO. If you missed, well, that's death. But it was a quick way to gain the upper hand, and whilst we've seen something like this with Devil Joe, I would love to see more. Now for one of my favorites. This last example will be a Final Frontier one, and it it could almost be considered to be a status of its own. Several monsters were able to decrease your weapon's sharpness by massive amounts just from attacking. The reduction was huge, sometimes dropping you down through two entire levels, meaning that one lapse in concentration could take you from sky blue all the way down to white. The monsters that wielded this effect were Stygian, Darakuros, Berukuros, Zenith Hermitor, and Baru Ragaru. Having an effect that you can still continue fighting through rather than paralysis or sleep, I believe, would make for some interesting dilemmas, and since defense down exists, this sharpness reduction could almost function as an attack down of sorts. And there you have it, a nice list of some of the obscure mechanics with a little bit of history. I know we've got our fancy new wire bug to look forward to, but hey, some of these little features could serve to make a fight more fresh in Rise. Which would you like to see? Perhaps you'd prefer an adaptable monster like Zero, or a monster that drains other like the aforementioned Baru. Let me know in those comments, and I will see you next time.